it's not our first vertical farm, but we really do believe it's something special. We produce about 10 million servings of food here a year. And we're really trying to change the way the world eats. We believe this is kind of the next generation of farming. And we say that in a way of, we really see this as the next step of control and evolution kind of in our understanding of how to grow food. But we also see ourselves as really just a part of an evolving food system. We need 70% more land to feed people in 15 to 20 years. And so we need to, all farmers to continue improving and growing crop better. And then we also hope to kind of help bridge that gap. Plants have different phases of growth, right? In our facility, they have three phases of growth. So first off, the plant growth starts all the way to the back corner of the facility. You can't quite see from here. And that's where seeding occurs. We seed into media. So that's where, same as outdoors, when you plant a seed in the ground, at first it doesn't really need much. It just needs some water. Right? Why? Because in that phase, plants need temperature and humidity. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get the plant to crack open. And once it cracks open and displays cotyledons, it's ready to start photosynthesizing. You've got to get it under lights. Right? So then we take them out and we put them in our first set of tables. And we move them into a small portion of the grow zone where they live for the first half of their life. They're getting lights and water and all the things they need to grow as every plant needs. And they reach a certain size where they need a little more space. So at first we grow our plants in these very dense trays. It's expensive to build these types of farms, and we need to make sure we're always being efficient and conscious of our space utilization. And so we start with these very tight trays, and then when they get big enough, we spread them out and give them more space so they can really flourish. When they're ready to flourish, we put them into what we call our finishing space. And with kind of complicated software and technology, we get them into their correct location, and then we provide the plants with different recipes as they grow. So we provide them with a different set of nutrients and lighting and other things, similar to how you wouldn't feed your kid the same food you feed yourself, the same food you feed your grandparents, right? We feed our plants different food as they grow, right? To make sure that they're always getting exactly what they need, but also we want to make sure we kind of push them to be their very best selves all the way throughout that growth process. And so they're ready to be harvested. Then they come out the far end of the grow zone, which is just over your shoulder that way. Right? And when they're ready to be harvested, just like anywhere else in the farm, take them out and we harvest them. Right? And we cut the leaves, we bring them out, and then we get them down to temperature so that we can go through and try and get as much of that just harvested freshness back to you guys when you go to eat our food as possible. So we sell, um, both through kind of retail channels and food service. So, you know, we're going to be hopefully at your local Kroger. You know, we're at Jungle Gyms and Dorothy Lanes and, you know, Country Fresh Markets and, and different, both major and also smaller retailers all around kind of this region. You know, we're very proud of being local. We want to serve our produce here so we don't ship it all over the country. But if you're getting our stuff, that's because you're within, you know, an hour or two drive of us. That's about as far as we're willing to send our product. But also, if you're looking around at restaurants, you might find us on the menu. And if you don't, feel free to ask about us, because we'd love to be there. We produce about a million and a half to two million pounds of food a year here, depending on exactly what mix of product we're producing. Right, and we grow everything from arugulas and kales and bok choys, all the way to lettuces and basils. And some of our other farms, we actually produce tomatoes and cucumbers as well. We, we really see ourselves as a part of the farming ecosystem. I'd say starting with the people we're hiring, we come in, we're still teaching people agronomy. We're teaching people how to grow, we're learning about plants, right? It's nothing crazy or different. We need a lot more food very, very quickly, even if climate change isn't an issue, right? If it is, that situation only gets more and more dire. From fires in California, you know, to hurricanes in Florida, to different food safety, we're seeing an increasing risk to the food system on top of the fact that we just need more food because we have more people. But I, I really believe that this is you know, a big part of the future of food. I believe that you will and should see this in every city you know, across this country and eventually all over the world. To be able to provide local food to people, the freshness, the flavor, and the nutrition that we can provide across a wide range of crops, more than just leafy greens, I think is really something very exciting. Now, we're not gonna ever necessarily be producing everything. Like I said, we're not trying to compete with pharma. And there's a whole set of crops that we think are best grown in farms, and we think there's plenty of space people eat a lot of food. Right, to be able to come in and provide added value to people all over the world.